He's on again. Yeah. All right, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. We're out here in Jamaica Bay in New York with my partner Vinny at Greenpoint Fish. Howdy. Uh, we got one in the bucket. We're going for Porgy. Uh, I know, it's not a monster, but we're going to keep chipping away. We're under the Gil Hodges Bridge in the Marine Parkway. Guy behind us keeps yelling over to us and he's catching monsters. So we're going to reset in a minute and see if we can bring a couple up. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Oh, it's, it's a beast. <laughs> it's a beast. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's actually a pretty good porgy. It is a good porgy. All right, hang on. So normally these would be in huge schools where we would just hit a bunch of them, but today we're, we're picking them off. But that is a Jamaica Bay Porgy. We'll probably scale it, pan fry it, and have ourselves lunch. Dispatch and throw them in. <laughs> Not a porgy. <laughs> now these are highly prized fish commercially, but not when they're this small. <laughs> That's a black sea bass. Alright, Vinny almost just sent me into the water. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a good sized porgy. Oh, hang on. End up getting a, a hook stuck in me. So that, that's a good porgy. <laughs> I don't know about falling into Jamaica Bay worth it, but, <laughs> but we still got them. We're on them. Like I said, we're picking away. We're going to keep going. Got a good one. I never know to get too excited because I could pull this up and it might not be. Uh, if you catch small ones, even a medium sized one feels huge. This feels pretty good. Oh, oh my <laughs> god, that's a monster! So, in Key West, this is the average size of porgies. For New York, <laughs> this is actually a pretty good porgy. That's a huge one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not bad. It's a big fish. Not bad at all. Another one in the bucket. So you're allowed to keep 30 of these per person. So technically we could have 60 per boat and with the two of us right now in the boat and they got to be 10 inches. But we're not going to go overboard because we don't need that. These are super sustainable fish. Usually right now we would be knees deep in them in the boat but today is a little bit slow but we got we got a few now we'll get a couple more and then we'll cook them up <laughs> so yesterday was a pretty fun day of fishing uh, it was really overcast and gray, and we were thinking about not going out, but I'm glad that we did. We ended up with five porgy and uh, one weak fish, which I'm going to cook up another day. But the porgy are interesting to me because they are, the bag limit is 30. There were two of us. That means we could have put 60 porgy in the boat. Why? Why would anyone ever need 60 porgy? But people were doing it around us. They were keeping it. Uh, we kept our five and we were keeping the larger ones because that's the other thing too. They're small, so if you go to fillet them, you don't get a lot of meat off of them. So it's a bit of a waste. Uh, the best thing to do with porgy is to cook them whole, which is exactly what we're doing today. I'm gonna uh, scale it, gut it, score it, and then we're just lightly gonna dredge it in flour and pan fry it. And then I'm gonna make a chimichurri. And what that is, is an herb sauce. Uh, I'm gonna do it by hand because I want it the more traditional way. I want it to be a little bit chunky, uh, more of almost like a salsa rather than a puree or a sauce that we put on top. And now chimichurri traditionally is Argentinian and uh, Uruguayan and they put it on steak 
So I'm probably making some people cringe by putting it on fish, but I'm gonna put it on fish. It's gonna stand up. The porgy has a good flavor, and since we're frying it, it's gonna stand up versus the uh, chimichurri. The chimichurri is gonna be garlic, red chilies, parsley, red wine vinegar, lemon, oregano. I think I got everything. So let's make that, put that aside, and then we'll prep the fish.
there you have our whole pan fried porgy with chimichurri. I'm gonna dig into this. Another thing too, the way to tell that it's cooked through, you sear it on one side, and then where we made those slits, lift them up, and if they break away from the bone, it's all the way cooked through. If they're still stuck to the bone, you got a little more time to go. Another thing is the bones, you don't want them to be cooked to where they are completely opaque and white. You still want them to be translucent. If you cook them all the way through and they're completely white, you overcooked a little bit, but let's, uh, let's dig in. And if you can't tell, Because of the richness of it being fried, that red wine vinegar and lemon cuts right through the richness. That parsley makes it so, so fresh, so nice. It is a really bright, nice dish that feels lighter than it is even though it's fried. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I got a couple of bees flying around me this entire time. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna swat them away. But uh, I'm gonna finish this sit by the water I'm losing my son and it's turning into another dreary day so I'm gonna eat get out of here and if you like this episode hit like hit subscribe and I'll see you on the next one